Retirement is supposed to mark the beginning of our golden years. A chance to pursue new interests and spend time with family. But for a growing number of seniors, the reality is bleaker. Struggles with maintaining health, loss of family and work roles, and coping with the deaths of peers and loved ones has led to increasing levels of depression. With the number of seniors increasing every year, this rise in depression among older adults presents a growing challenge for our healthcare system. I find with even, even senior friends, um, the loneliness sometimes gets to them. Because we're used to being very active in our lifetimes and then all of a sudden, it's not there. There are very, very high rates of depression in older adults, 20 to 25 percent. It's being untreated. This rise in depression among older adults has led to decreasing levels of functioning, reduced quality of life, and worsening health conditions. Depression and anxiety disorders, what we sometimes call the generalized anxiety disorder, are two of the most important problems that primary care physicians face. From my standpoint, especially with my elderly patients, I talk about uh, the, the fact of depression as being something that complicates medical problems. In fact, health care costs for seniors with depression are about 50% higher than for those without depression. One challenge is that older adults are not likely to seek treatment for depression. I think the real issue for older consumers is a stigma issue. A lot of people grew up, that are in this cohort, grew up thinking that um, if you were depressed, it was sort of your fault. Most people who have depression are afraid to admit it because they think someone is going to think they're crazy. Fear of stigma among older adults is not the only inhibitor of successful diagnosis and treatment. Providers often overlook signs of depression or are uncomfortable asking about mental health issues. There was this big misconception that because these folks were, you know, maybe isolated, because they weren't feeling well sometimes, or they had these chronic illnesses, or they, just by virtue of being seniors, of course they were going to be depressed. Sometimes there's a tendency in medicine to focus on just one part of the human to focus on the physical part and not the mental part. But in fact, particularly in older adults, we see both so commonly occurring at the same time that in order to provide high quality care, we really do have to uh, be considerate of ways of treating the mental and the physical concurrently. Researchers around the country are finding ways to do it. The substance abuse, and Mental Health Services Administration's Center for Mental Health Services has identified evidence-based practices, or EBPs, in use around the country that are succeeding. Evidence-based practices include psychotherapy interventions and the use of antidepressant medications. These can be used individually or in conjunction to improve symptoms. They can also be used within models of outreach services and collaborative and integrated mental and physical care. One of the issues was how to identify patients uh, early on and how to provide uh, the best kind of treatment uh, given time constraints uh, in primary care. Brown. One model of care for diagnosing and treating depression in older patients is IMPACT which stands for Improving Mood, Promoting Access to Collaborative Care. The Institute for Family Health partnered with the developers of IMPACT to implement the model in New York City. Yes, it's Dr. Gale. The mission of the Institute for Family Health is to deliver uh, private practice level quality primary care to an indigent population. IMPACT is a collaborative model of care that seeks to identify and treat depression in older adults in a primary care setting. Good afternoon, how can I help you? 
Yes, good afternoon. I'm here to see Dr. Gale. Okay, let me step step on and have a seat with me here, please. The impact model helps promote a holistic view of patient care um, by integrating depression screening into chronic disease management. It is the first time that there was a really publicized research-based model that supported something which is near and dear to me, which is the integration of primary care and mental health services. Today you're here for your physical, and part of what we do here is we ask all patients coming in for a physical to fill out or to answer questions about depression. Project Impact attracted me and our organization because it enabled us to provide services to our geriatric population that were not being addressed previously. The two key features of the Impact model are screening for and tracking depression in a primary care setting with a patient health questionnaire and on-site collaborative care with the patient's physician. When a patient comes in, they are checked in at the front desk. They are then transferred to nursing for an intake or triage process. And during that triage process, we've actually incorporated the PHQ-2. Okay, I have a few personal questions to ask you. This is completely confidential and it's for the use of the doctors only. Okay. Over the last two weeks, have you been bothered by any of the following problems? Little interest or pleasure in doing things? And if they score one question positive, it triggers us doing the PHQ-9. This is a form called a PHQ-9 and I need you to read this and fill this out. PHQ-9 is a patient health questionnaire that has nine questions that are scored from zero to three, and the patient themselves answer it. So you're not diagnosing the patient, they're diagnosing themselves as to whether or not they have true depression or not. And oftentimes, they're scoring with moderate depression, they're scoring 10 and above. And, and those are the patients that usually you're seeing much more frequently than you would expect to. These are the patients that are having more problems with their comorbid conditions, their diabetes, their, 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 their high blood pressure, and so on and so forth. And once you start treating those patients with scores of 10 and above in the PHQ-9, you start to see the improvements in the rest of their well-being. Well, my nurse told me that um, she gave you a patient health questionnaire for depression, so I'm just going to spend a couple of seconds on score to see how far along the curve you are. We offer them problem-solving therapy. We offer them um, meetings with our psychiatrist to follow up on any kind of um, psychopharmacology. And we also offer them just touching base one, once a month by phone because some people who might not want these other interventions, we want to you know, keep on our radar and we want to make sure that we're, we're monitoring them on a monthly basis. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the course of management is going to be. I'm going to give you the medication today and I'm going to ask that you follow up with me in about two weeks. Anytime during those two weeks if you're having trouble with the medication you can call me. I'm going to get our psychosocial services colleague to sit with you. She's going to be talking to you about the course of management she will have with you and um, I expect to see you again in two weeks. And because we have uh, the tools of the, the PHQ-9, I'm able to give a score, share that with the patient, and then we can say, well, you know, uh, we tried this last time, but uh, even though you say you're feeling better, uh, it doesn't really seem like uh, your score has improved. Maybe, maybe we really should have you talk to somebody. The physician can collaborate with the depression care manager and psychiatrists who are located on site. In the Project Impact model, the depression care managers can be either nurses or they could be social workers. So out of all those things that you mentioned, what is one that you would like to work on? I want to go back to where I used to be, where I used to look forward to mm -hmm. getting up in the morning, right. getting dressed and going out there, being around people. I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like another day, i got to get dressed. Where am I going? Mm -hmm. I don't want to go out. I don't want that. I want that energy that again. That energy that I had. We make sure first that they're not in any danger to themselves, and then we you know, set up a protocol where we offer them problem-solving therapy. Well, the goal that we can work on is to get you back to where you were three weeks ago. That would be great, right? Yes. And to get you from being depressed to feeling like your normal self again. 
and those baby steps are called self-management goals. So there are goals that you establish for yourself that you need. It gives the patient the opportunity to come up with what some of their problems are and how they even want to, you know, get through some of the barriers that they're facing. The patient has a big say in, okay, so how do we get from here to here to here to really, you know, sl slowly start to uh, decrease these depressive symptoms and it all, it comes from them. It's very difficult for older adults to seek treatment, to seek counseling on their own. And uh, the primary care office is a very good entry point for the patients to be uh, identified as depressed if they are, which usually older adults would go undiagnosed. We help people to reduce their depression. What I found with this particular model is that it did identify patients uh, before sometimes I was aware that they were suffering from depression. He said, told me the results of his interview. The, I said, you, you saw all that? He said, yes. I said, well, I better think about it because I wasn't aware that I had a problem. But he thought I did, and he probably was right. And I enjoyed talking about my daily life, which has been changed so very much. And it was a wonderful experience. Most of these patients have functioned well for most of their life, and they just really need some extra support now in how to get you know, from, from the problem to feeling better. I met with Ms. Brown. Yeah, thanks for seeing her. Um, I'm gonna see her in two weeks. Um, how, how did your interaction go with her? It went well. And now, part of the challenge for me is finding the time to spend to, to, to manage this patient. And if I can reach across the hall and get my social service specialist on board to say, listen, I don't have time right this minute. Can you spend some time with this particular patient while I go do that? By the time you're finished with her, I can come back and, uh, and perhaps discuss um, other management with the patient, including medications and so forth. It, it, it makes the flow so much easier. You're not having the patient run around to different areas trying to find the services that you can provide right on the premises. I would say the number one thing is getting the doctors on board and the doctors to buy into the program and recognize how it's going to both help their patients and you know help the practice. Having the social worker uh, integrated into the whole process uh, provided a uh, strong support for the primary care providers and also uh, made it easier for, for them to intervene because they didn't feel like they were uh, carrying this whole burden on their own. The use of the screening tools for Project Impact has enabled us to demonstrate the improvement uh, in the PHQ-9 scores for the patients in the project. We like to measure things and you can measure the PHQ-9 score. You can measure the diabetes evaluation on their hemoglobin A1C, whether or not they're getting better. You can see that the blood pressure is getting better. All of these things makes it more satisfying in treating our patients. This program is very easy to implement when it's, once it's rolling. It's very simple to, to screen patients and provide them with needed uh, medication or counseling and support. Um, to improve their um, uh, lifestyle. All of that integration of the medical information and the psychiatric uh, can be very nicely uh, utilized to, to form as accurate a picture of the patient's diagnosis as possible. So it really was Depression 101 to discuss what are the signs of depression? What is helpful for a patient to reduce their depression in order to help their medical condition. So the patient is not coming through the door every two weeks for another problem. If we can make it easier for them to access services that they need, I think that's very exciting. Integrated mental and physical health care services have been proven to work well in reaching many older adults. But what about older adults who may be falling through the cracks of primary health care? Psychogeriatric Assessment and Treatment in City Housing, or PATCH, 
is a mobile treatment program developed at the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. It targets older individuals with mental illness whose needs are not being met by the traditional healthcare system. It combines the mobile treatment model and the Spokane gatekeeper model and adds elements that address the medical and social challenges that are so prevalent in this group. People who lived in public housing sites had three times the rates of depression and several other psychiatric disorders as elderly people living in the community. So we knew we had a very high risk, high prevalence population in public housing. We're serving the most vulnerable elderly population. It's the impoverished elderly with mental illness who are socially isolated for the most part um, and who won't access traditional care. Hello, good to see you again. Yeah, okay, that's what you do all the Persons that we work with, for the most part, are not going to seek traditional mental health services. With social, physical, and psychiatric issues compounding each other, the needs of these older adults often go unaddressed. And you come to realize that the best way to improve the quality of life for seriously ill older individuals is to simultaneously try to address their social, medical, and mental health needs. Now, are you tired during the day? I get tired. Do you fall asleep, take cat naps? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know it's hard, but it's if you can keep yourself from doing that, you'll probably sleep better at night. That's right. We developed the program about 20 years ago after actually failing uh, to reach this population through more traditional programs. And then um, the idea of providing both mobile treatment, but also using what was called the gatekeeper model, in which people in the community were used to identify people who might need mental health services. We combined those two together and launched the program back in 1986. The gatekeepers for the patch program are housing authority staff who have been trained to recognize potential signs of mental illness in older residents. The nurses will initially provide educational programs for um, staff that work in the housing authority buildings, and this would include uh, managers, counselors, uh, security staff, anybody that may come in contact with a resident that is ill and in need of services. How you doing, Miss Rachel? Oh, the maintenance staff is also involved. They may be the first contact in some cases. The patch program has been very, very helpful with identifying as well as following up on things that we identify to help people not be evicted, not be in their units without taking their meds, not being there without anyone to speak with as far as um, making doctor's appointments or even eating on a day-to-day -day basis. Once we recognize or think that we recognize a particular situation, then I call Patch, ask them to come out, and they will do an intake to verify and then hopefully beginning to support that particular individual. The Patch teams include a nurse, a geriatric psychiatrist, and a case manager who bring services directly to residents in their homes. Once housing authority staff identify a resident who may be in need of services, a visit from a patch program nurse is usually the next step. The reason we've chosen at the beginning to use nurses is because many of these patients turn out to have unmet medical need as well as unmet psychiatric need. We do a mini mental in everyone initially as well as a depression scale and a psychotic type of scale. Do you know the name of the program I'm with? It's, it's called Patch. Yeah, yeah, patch. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the brochure I gave you, I actually We're I, asking I, demographic I, information, medical history, psychiatric history, medication list if it's possible, and then a general listing of, it's sort of a yes-no listing of all possible medical diagnosis that the folks may have. Did you bring this whole card in when you went to see him? Um, yeah, I took this one to the doctor. The big pink one is called Depakote. Depakote? Mm-hmm. I didn't know the name. Yeah. The second element then is to have a trained geriatric clinician make contact with the person, offer our services, do an assessment. Oh, very good. Very good. 
So, um, so we gotta get. So you've been in the nursing home lately, a lot of times. Have a good day. That's what that's what Miss Mary was saying that you you've had to go to the nursing home a few times. Oh yes, it's just so it's so crazy. I'll get to. It's a habit. Habit, yeah. A habit. I got a lot of bad habits yeah. myself. Yeah. The minute you walk in someone's house. You, you you know more than, than you'll ever learn, you know, following somebody for years in a clinic. Mm -hmm. And then this one, how's your reading? Do you, are you, do you read okay? The psychiatrist does a um, standard psychiatric diagnostic visit, and then together with the client, develop a treatment plan. And that's when we decide whether we really want to include the services of the case manager. It's done very well, actually. Right. Yeah. All right, Mr. Williams, it was good meeting you. Yeah. All right. In addition to addressing the medical and psychiatric needs of their patients, the patch team can include a case manager to address social and financial challenges that may exacerbate their other needs. So her certification review with mobility is scheduled for the 24th of March, so that's already been set up as well. So. Buck Weeks is a patch case manager who works with the treatment team to address these challenges. You, have, you get Social Security each month yeah. for your money? Mm -hmm. So he'll come in and help with entitlements, transportation, making arrangements for meals. Um, I mean, the, the, the list is endless for what he, he does. Do you remember discussing that? Yes, sir. What I help do is work as part of the team with the nurses and the psychiatrists, coordinating services for the people we serve, helping take care of medical appointments, monitoring medical appointments, helping solve any problems with benefits, entitlements, and resolve any conflicts that uh, occur. And then this is just so you know how they came up with that number. Okay. No. Sometimes there's not a whole lot of communication between different doctors, different services, and the family. And when people are getting older, they're having trouble remembering who they spoke to, who told them what. They don't always accurately relay the information to other doctors, other family members. So by being in touch with every treatment team member and being able to be like the hub, it gives me a chance to make sure that all the services are complete. Not all residents are immediately receptive to services, even services that are brought directly to their homes. The nurses and case managers have found that developing a relationship with the client and being able to help them with even one of their problems can help make that client more interested in other services. They will let a nurse in the door. Many people are used to home health nurses coming out or public health nurses coming out. And if you somehow find a way to help them with something that they think is necessary, which usually is not their medical illness or their psychiatric illness, then you, then you have a way in to get the rest of their needs addressed. So sometimes it takes a while to establish a rapport. Good. Good. Do you know where your wife is buried? Sure. If they could help you find out where your wife is buried. Yeah. And you may be having your niece or your nephew go find where she is. Right. I would like to know. I think that's a good idea. The time spent listening, hearing what someone's saying, and knowing them over time, so that you actually can anticipate or even name what others just are not seeing. I think that's a, a, a key piece to persons beginning to stabilize because oftentimes they don't feel that they've been heard. If we can initially get medical problems or their social problems treated, then they're more receptive to getting the psychiatric problems treated. The goal of PATCH is to stabilize older adults through in-home treatment and then transition them to traditional mental health services after six months. Once uh, PATCH becomes involved with a resident, we see them coming out more. We see them interacting more in the lobby area with their staff. When they come in, I'm cheerful, I'm happy. I know they're going to be there. I know, especially when I know she'll be there Tuesday. And we found that we could decrease rates of depression and depressive symptoms by about 20% in the buildings we intervened in, whereas the buildings that we did not intervene in, actually depression rates went up over two years. Without the patch program, I could see individuals being placed in nursing homes. I can see individuals becoming homeless because of dementia. I can see individuals simply shutting down. As a nation, as a healthcare system, 
Uh, here's a group of people we can make a huge difference with by relatively simple but focused uh, programs. And uh, I'm proud of the state and the city that uh, for almost 20 years they've been willing to support this from the state level. People can be treated. People can have full and, and good lives, but not if they're not treated, if they're not identified. We hear this all the time, that, that we make it, we've made a difference uh, in people's lives and we've improved their quality of life and that helps us keep going. Depression does not have to be a part of aging. The impact and patch models are just two examples of the many practices that are being put to use to successfully identify and treat depression. If you would like more information about evidence-based practices for treatment of depression in older adults, go to samhsa.gov shin or call 1-877-SAMHSA-7. I think people should realize that. Because you're older, it doesn't mean you have to be depressed.